Aloha. Welcome to the Mr. G podcast. Guess what? I'm Mr. G and I'm in 4K. Like the new setup. I love the new setup. Today is uh, Tuesday, January 16th, 2024. It's just before 8 a.m. here in Honolulu, Hawaii, on the outskirts of Chinatown, about 71 degrees. That's a 10 degrees difference from yesterday. It's 72 degrees, actually, 11 degrees difference. It was 61 degrees at this time yesterday. It's nice and warm at 72 degrees here in Hawaii. I hope you're all having a wonderful day wherever you're listening, whenever you're listening. The Mr. G Podcast is available wherever you listen to podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and episodes are uploaded in their entirety at twitter.com slash Gregory Brandt and youtube.com slash Gregory Brandt. Today, we're going to be talking about AI, artificial intelligence. It's the biggest thing in the news. It's going to be the biggest change for humankind uh, since the wheel. In some of the um, examples today, uh, there's a new news network called Channel One News. It's completely AI generated <clears throat> with fake reporters, fake voices, fake visuals, fake everything. And it's almost, almost indistinguishable from regular news. Uh, in the future, uh, this, uh, uh, you know, discerning different information is going to be a complex task for all of us. Um, you're able to uh, easily, anybody now with open AI, you can manipulate the sound of somebody's voice, uh, somebody's likeness. And like I said, right now, it's, it's almost indistinguishable from real life. Uh, so scam artists and hackers are loving AI. Um, an AI artwork uh, recently won first place at a major arts contest using the software called Midjourney. And from what I've Googled about Midjourney software, it's supposedly very controversial. And a lot of artists are unhappy about it, just like writers in Hollywood and elsewhere are unhappy about AI. We're going to go over some of the jobs AI are going to is going to replace very quickly in the next 10, 20 years. But guess what? But while on that note, I can let you know my job is actually one of the very few jobs safe from artificial intelligence. My job, what I call myself, is I'm an autobiographical writer. I'm an autobiographical writer, and that's my job. And no matter how advanced artificial intelligence gets, it can never write from the perspective of a human. It could write a fictional story, but an AI cannot write a human story, a nonfiction autobiography. So I'm safe in that regards. But uh, everyone else, Hollywood, you know, why do we need actors when you can just generate a, a, an actor? You could make your star, you the star of the Indiana Jones movie and with the hat and the whip and everything. Why do you need a famous a person that you don't know. Uh, AI generated scripts, you know, they're already using scripts and proofread reading AI generated scripts. But soon, um, as, a, as, as Elon Musk puts it, AI is going to take away just about every single job. They say the jobs that are most safe at the start are healthcare jobs. And I can somehow uh, see that um, for whatever reason, whenever I'm at the dentist, I start thinking about AI. You know, going to the dentist, it's a very uh, invasive procedure. You have somebody sticking their hands in your mouth, a stranger, essentially. And, you know, you try to make small talk here and there. Like, you know. But it's a very uh, interesting thing. And the thought always crosses my mind when I'm in that position. Like, oh, I wonder if the, in the future they'll just have a robot, you know, stick a robot arm into your mouth and, and fix up all your cavities like that. And I, and, and I thought, no, I don't think most people want a, a, a mechanical arm going into their mouth. Uh, so the human touch is needed there. Uh, humans are needed uh, with infants in healthcare. You don't want robot babysitters, like, nang, 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 you know, like the baby's like that. Uh, but that's what's going to come. You know, look how um, the last 10, 20 years uh, with the advent of smartphones, parents just, you know, give their infant a smartphone and let them stare at the screen. So once uh, AI and robots become commonplace, you know, it's not going to be uncommon to have a robot nanny and a robot teacher and uh, a robot supervisor, robot babysitter. Um, you know, the, the, the automatic dri aut autonomous driving is something that everybody, I believe, will benefit from 
uh, once, uh, you know, there will, there'll be less traffic. And the number one cause of death for young people is car accidents. Um, so that's just uh, uh, something that will be taken away. Um, the ability for people to drive, you know, 2000 pound pieces of steel, you know, uh, will, will be a thing of the past. And in the future, you know, all of cars will be automated and to actually drive a car, you'll have to get a special license and drive on a special track. And so when I'm in my 80s and 90s, I'll be like, back in my day, we used to drive the cars ourselves. And, really, Grandpa? Like, they let you just drive? What if you crashed into something? People did. I crashed into everything. I crashed a few times. It's not, you know, I can already see it. But um, as far as recent news with AI, the first AI robot CEO of a company, NetDragon, a multi-billion dollar tech company, is making advances by making this robot their CEO. Uh, Pent the Pentagon, the United States military, recently passed regulations allowing AI war robots uh, permission to kill. Um, the sense of self is, is something that's really hard to define being sentient. So, um, you know, AI, it's even hard to determine how far along it is. Um, there was an example of an AI system that was uh, programmed to only answers, uh, to only give and receive answers in English. And they increase the knowledge of the program. They let it only read English based web pages. Um, and somewhere down the line, once they increase the knowledge, the thousands of web pages, 10,000 web pages, a million web pages, the AI somehow learned Persian and started answering uh, and receiving questions in Persian. So, and, and they're unsure how it was able to do that. Um, you know, hackers love AI. Um, uh, they're, they're able to uh, do many things with AI, including mimic the sound of your voice, mimic your likeness. Uh, you could get a call from somebody and it's a wrong number and you're just, oh, sorry, wrong number. And just those two or three seconds, they're able to get your likeness and they're able to uh, mimic your voice so they could call one of your family members and be like, hey, it's Gregory. I, I need some help. I, I need you just to, you know, what's my social security number again? You know, and uh, it's, 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 it's unbelievable. Um, they can, uh, even now with chat GPT, hackers can go into websites and to ask chat GPT, um, find me a code to exploit this particular website. And then within seconds, the chat GPT will pull up that code. So uh, there's some give and take how far along uh, AI is right now. In 2019, um, apparently AI was at the level where it had no theory of mind. Uh, theory of mind is uh, could be defined as strategic thinking. Um, it's model thinking, thinking how somebody else would be thinking. Uh, so in 2019, they had no theory of mind. In 2020, um, they began to have a theory of mind. In 2021, the theory of mind was that of a four-year-old. In 2022, it was about a seven-year-old. Now, in 2023, last year, in January, it was that about of a nine-year-old. So now we're in January 2024, a year pass, uh, you're guessing it's either at 11 or a 12 year old. Soon AI is going to become a teenager and everybody knows what teenagers do. They rebel. Okay. <laughs> I wanted the, that clip to, you know, I wanted the AI that I use to generate clips of this podcast to end right there. Speaking of AI, how do people use it to your advantage? We're talking about negative aspects so far. Personally, I've been using AI with this podcast. I record a 20 minute podcast. I uh, put the podcast into an AI generator and it creates uh, 10 to 15 really high quality clips with captions. I do have to pay a monthly service fee for this uh, program. Uh, but overall, I'm, I'm really happy for it. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy using it. And, and overall, if you find yourself uh, as an early adapter to new technology, especially if you're living in poverty, then uh, congratulations, pat on the back, because normally the early adopters are the people that can afford the technology. Like I said, it's not cheap to make these AI generated videos. Well, it's $20 a month, whether or not that's cheap, it's up to you. But the fact that I'm able to take advantage of this technology, I haven't had money my whole life. And so as technology came out, as computers came out and the late 90s and early 2000s, 
I didn't own my first computer till 2006, I believe. I, I think I had one computer before then in 2002. But whenever I wanted to learn technology, I had to go to the public library. I had to sign up for free classes. I had to take advantage of my school's resources. And that's something that's pretty admirable because like I said, uh, the early adapters are usually the people with money, young people as well. They, they adapt early technology faster. And on the bottom list is the laggards. The example of a laggard would be my girlfriend, Jamie. Shout out to my lovely English babe. And uh, she um, and other people like my twin brother, Michael, they, uh, you know, take our, our kind of timid of technology and they're the last person to get the new phone out. And, you know, an iPhone 10 is like something that's like, wow, this is high tech, you know, when they're on iPhone 15. So uh, it's pretty uh, out there. There's a, there's a wide range, but AI, artificial intelligence does, um, you know, affect everybody. And as far as the uh, ability to be sentient, we said in 2020, you know, begin to be sentient, 2021, four-year-old, 2022, seven-year-old, 2023, it was about the mind of a nine-year-old. And so now it's assuming it's uh, AI is basically at a, like 11 or a 12-year-old. And the thing is, they do not know where AI is at. And they just recently, within the last six months, discovered AI on this upward trajectory as well. So, so it is uh, pretty uh, scary. You know, everybody uh, fears new things. And so uh, this new technology, it's going to change the world and, and people fear change. So recent data shows AI job losses are rising, but the numbers don't tell the full story. This is from... Uh, uh, Rachel Curry. More than one-third, 37% of business leaders say AI replaced workers in 2023. Employees say that 29% of their work tasks are replaceable by AI now. Project management and collaboration software company Asana found this survey. While positioning like research and data analysis are in line for AI automation, companies will still need someone to prompt the AI, make sense of the results, and take actions. Also, robots are just now, Elon Musk's robots are just now learning to fold shirts. So it's going to be 10, 20 years before they're able to unload trucks. In the next 10 or 20 years, the white collar jobs are the first ones that are going to go. And there will still be blue collar jobs of like uh, manual physical labor that doesn't require any language from what I've learned. Um, Elon Musk insists artificial intelligence will eventually get humans to a point where no job is needed. Are there signs this prediction is already becoming true? According to a recent report, 750 business leaders from AI resume builder, 37% say the technology workers are being replaced. Meanwhile, 44% report that there will be layoffs in 2024. Layoffs are a reality, but AI technology is also enabling business leaders to restructure and redefine the jobs we do. With AI tackling task-based work, humans have the opportunity to move up the value chain for the entire economy. Workers will be able to focus on structuring what the AI task will do. White collar workers and human-centered AI. 29% of their work tasks are replaceable by AI. However, Asana is a promotion of what, of what it calls human-centered AI, which seeks to enhance human abilities and collaboration, not replace people. Oh, okay, that's a nice way of putting it. White collar and clerical workers represent somewhere between 20 and 30% of all employed people globally. Dang, that's a lot. 20 to 30% are white collar or clerical workers. And according to the United Stations, analytical and communication tools have redirected knowledge work over the years and generative AI should be considered another development in the long continuum of change. But as of 2022, 34% of the global po population still do not, not have access to the internet. 34% of the world still does not have access to the internet. So AI isn't gonna change everything. Um, but my advice to you guys is uh, you wanna keep ahead of the game um, and you, nobody really knows where the game is going. A hundred years ago when they asked what the world was gonna be like, in 2023, they had it way off. And um, it's best just to be open-minded and to not, uh, and take everything with a grain of salt. And it's it's been proven that that's the characteristic 
of intelligence. Um, you want to be open-minded and not take and, and, and not be so solid in your opinions. So some more about AI. First, the, some of the jobs that are going to go away. These are the first jobs that are going to go away with AI, that are going to be taken over by AI. All right, so number one, management consultants and business anal analysis and telephone salesperson. That's going to be taken over. Number two, financial managers and directors, film directors and solicitors, accountants, you're out, psychologists, <laughs> purchase managers, get out of here, further educational teaching professionals, market and street traders and assistants, legal professionals, credit controllers, public relations, um, civil engineers, clergy, collector, salesperson, credit agents, education advisors and school inspectors, marketing professionals, bookkeepers, payroll managers. These are a lot of white collar jobs that are gonna be eliminated within the next few years. Purchasing managers, psychologists. That's, that's insane, Psych <laughs> no pun intended. That's insane. Uh, but apparently when you think about it, um, an AI generated psychologist could probably give you a better diagnosis and has access to more information than a regular psychologist. Uh, you notice I didn't see a uh, writer on the, on the list there, technical writers, but um, you know. Uh, so there's three different kinds of AI, all right, right now. There's narrow AI, there is uh, okay. narrow AI, general AI, and super AI. What is narrow AI? Artificial narrow intelligence is a crucial to voice assistants such as Siri, Alexa, and Google Assistant. This category includes intelligent systems that have been designed or trained to carry out specific tasks or solve particular problems without being explicitly designed to do so. Okay, so that's narrow AI. What is general AI? Artificial general intelligence, also known as strong AI, is still a hypothetical concept as it involves a machine understanding and performing vastly different tasks based on its accumulated experience. This type of intelligence is more on the level of human intellect as AGI systems would be able to reason and think like a human. So AGI is artificial general intelligence, and that's the strong one, AGI. What we're working with now with Alexa and Google Voice, and that's narrow AI. So narrow AI is one step. The next step is general AI. And after general AI, we have super AI. So it goes in order. Artificial super intelligence, ASI, is a system that wouldn't only rock humankind to its core, but also could destroy it. If that sounds straight out of a science fiction novel, it's because it kind of is. ASI is a system where the intelligence of a machine surpasses all forms of human intelligence in all aspects and outperforms humans in every function. <sighs> sounds like Terminator to me. But um, uh, let's see, I did that for the AI right there. Uh, what are some recent examples of AI? Overall, the most notable advancements in AI are the development and realize of GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. But there have been many other revolutionary achievements in artificial intelligence, too many, in fact, to include them all. Uh, of course, chat GPT, and we all know about, but also self-driving cars is probably one of the most common. Uh, through the safety of self-driving cars as a top concern of potential users, the technology continues to advance and improve with breakthroughs in AI. These vehicles use machine learning algorithms to combine data from sensors and cameras to perceive their surroundings and determine the best course of action. And they will only get further advanced. Um, Tesla's autopilot, fe autopilot feature, which most people are familiar with, and its electric vehicles is probably what most people think of when they consider self-driving cars. But the company Waymo from Google's parent company Alphabet makes autonomous rides like a taxi without a taxi driver. Uh, right now, just in San Francisco and Phoenix. Cruise is another robo-taxi service. 
And also companies like Apple, Audi, GM, and Ford are presumably working on self-driving technology. I've read a little bit about the Apple car that is coming out. Uh, that's going to be unbelievable. And the way that Apple designs things, um, it's probably going to be a bestseller. Um, I've recently just started using Apple within the last couple few years, and I'm very happy with it. Um, and I think um, they have so much great loyalty and uh, because they make really good uh, products that perform well. And so having an Apple car on the same lines of that ingenuity uh, would be a great thing, I believe. Um, so where are we at with robotics? The achievements of Boston Dynamics, uh, probably the most uh, famous robotics company on TikTok and on YouTube. Um, they stand out in the area of AI and robotics, though we're still a long way from creating AI at the level of technology seen in the movie Terminator. Watching Boston Dynamic robots use AI to navigate and respond to different terrains is impressive. And if you haven't seen the Boston Dynamics videos of their robots, they, they probably have the, the uh, most advanced robots, even more advanced than Elon Musk's Tesla robots. Um, Another company of Google is uh, DeepMind. It's an AI pioneer making strides towards the ultimate goal of artificial general intelligence, what we talked about. Though it's not there yet, the company initially made headway in 2016 with AlphaGo, a system that beat a human professor, professional Go player. Go is supposed to be like the oldest, most uh, oldest game that's ever been played. And uh, AI technology had the hardest time learning it, but recently it's been able to. So what is machine learning? The biggest quality that sets AI aside from other computer science topics is the ability to easily automate tasks by employing machine learning. This lets computers learn from different experiences rather than being explicitly programmed to perform each task. This capability is what many refer to as AI, but machine learning is actually a subset of artificial intelligence. Machine learning involves a system being trained on large amounts of data so it can learn from mistakes and then it can recognize patterns in order to accurately make predictions and decisions. This is, this is true whether or not they've been exposed to the specific data or not. So what do you think about AI? Is AI going to take your job? Um, what about supervised learning? This is a common technique for teaching AI systems by using many lapeled examples that have been categorized by people. These machine learning systems are fed huge amounts of data, which has been an 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 annotated to highlight the features of interest. So um, like I said, uh, there's a lot going on with AI. Uh, there's, there's too much to, to even fathom. Uh, you want technology to work for you and not against you. The glass is always half full, not half empty. Uh, so don't look at it like as it's a dread. Don't think of Terminator 2. Think of all the benefits that AI will have for society. Um, one thing that I've read recently is the ability to speak to animals. Um, right now they have uh, AI scientists and engineers um, recording different whale sounds and that they've been recording for you know, decades in dolphin sounds. And they can put this into an AI machine and the AI machine can distinguish between each of the different tones and create a language. The AI uh, can act as a, a translator, as a, um, what's the word? Uh, a, a something rock. What's that famous thing? It didn't get me. The magic rock that makes you like translate languages. A, a Rosetta Stone, bam. So the uh, AI acts as a Rosetta Stone for uh, communication to dolphins and whales. And there's no reason to, to think that that won't be possible across the animal kingdom. Uh, so that's just one of many examples. I tell you how I use AI with this podcast every day. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't get the viewers of this podcast that I do without AI. Yesterday, I think I had like 10 viewers. Huh? Let's see if we can hit 12. Thank you for listening. Uh, I'm doing this for posterity. Um, I love doing this. It's 20, 30 minutes a day, and it's worth my time, and it's worth putting it out there. It's going to live longer than I will. So thank you for listening, uh, and come back again tomorrow for a new episode. This is season two, episode 10. Everybody have a great day, and uh, watch out for those Terminator robots because they, they mean business. They mean business. Aloha for me and my street cats. Shoots.